Hello everyone. Welcome back to another session on dentistry and more. So today's topic is incisal liability. So incisal liability it is nothing but the space difference between the permanent and primary incisors. So as we all know the size of permanent teeth is greater than the primary teeth. So once the primary teeth is exfoliated the permanent teeth erupts into the space of primary teeth but it requires more space as you can see here this red teeth are permanent teeth which is erupting and the black are deciduous teeth so you can see the difference the mesiodistal at least on a two dimension you can see the difference between the space available and space required so this is the dotted red line is the space required and this black line is space available. So this difference is known as incisal liability. The space available and space required or space needed the difference between these two is known as incisal liability and which is 7 millimeter in maxilla and 6 millimeter in mandible. So how do we achieve this, that incisal liability is achieved by the four mechanisms, that is the more space will be achieved to accommodate the permanent incisors. So the first one is interdental spacing of primary incisors. So we know the primary incisors there is slight interdental spacing present. So when this permanent teeth erupts which are bigger incisor can utilize this space to get accommodate into that position. So that interdental spacing can be utilized. That is the first option. The second mechanism is intercanine arch width growth. So as the new tooth erupts, that is permanent incisors erupts, there will be a width of arch in the canine to canine region. So it happens when this uh, anterior erupts. So since it is bigger to get accommodated, the arch itself expands from canine to canine region. So that also is a mechanism which uh, the permanent incisors used to occupy its final position in the arch. So that is the second mechanism. The third mechanism is labial positioning of permanent incisors. So we know that the permanent teeth are more labially positioned or more forwardly placed compared to the primary dentition. Primary dentition is al almost like upright position but the permanent teeth are more labially placed. So when it goes to the forward or label position there is increase in arch size. So that also can be used to overcome the incisal liability that is labial positioning of permanent incisors. The last mechanism is favorable size ratio between primary and permanent incisors. Favorable size ratio is nothing but if you have a bigger or comparatively bigger primary uh, tooth uh, that we can say that it is a favorable uh, ratio and if the size of uh, deciduous anteriors or primary anteriors is comparatively low that will be a unfavorable uh, size ratio compared to the permanent teeth. So that is incisal liability. It is a difference between space available and space needed for the anterior teeth. So when the bigger anterior uh, permanent anterior that is uh, incisor syrups we need more space that is known as incisal liability. 7 millimeter in maxilla, 6 millimeter in mandible. So this can be maxilla, mandible. So this can be overcome by the interdental spacing of primary incisors, the intercanine arch width growth, label positioning of permanent incisors, favorable size ratio. So all this can be utilized and overcome the incisor liability. So I'll come up with a new session on dentistry and more. Thank you.